In Money Watch, the Trump administration's escalating trade dispute with China is putting some American industries on uncertain ground. While in Brussels yesterday for a NATO summit, the president tweeted, quote, always thinking about our farmers, other countries, trade barriers and tariffs have been destroying their businesses. I am fighting for a level playing field for our farmers and will win. He also addressed the issue during a news conference earlier today. You know, we're in negotiations with the EU and we're going to be meeting with them next week. We've been treated very unfairly on trade. Our farmers have been shut out of the European Union. They're coming in to start negotiations with me. We'll see. Uh, and if they don't negotiate in good faith, we'll do something having to do with all of the millions of cars that are coming into our country and being taxed at a virtually zero level, at a very low level. And I think we're going to end up doing something very good with China. Right now, we're in a pretty nasty trade battle, but I think ultimately that'll work out. I really think we have a big advantage. In it. I don't say uh, that's an easy situation because that's been years of abuse of the United States by presidents, frankly, that allowed that to happen. So I've taken over a lot of bad hands and I'm fixing each one of them and I'm fixing them well. Anna Swanson covers trade and international economics for the New York Times and joins us now from Washington. And Anna, you wrote an article for the New York Times called How Trump's Policy Decisions Undermine the Industries He Pledged to Help. It's a really interesting article. Uh, it focuses a, a lot on farmers, but not just the farmers. There are other industries as well. So sort of take us through, it, through this whole thing. What are some of the unintended consequences of some of his policies? Sure. Well, that is the main point of the article, that the president is really trying to help American industry and help manufacturing workers in particular. But when uh, you make these measures to try to help some of these industries, there are a lot of unintended consequences. Um, so, for example, measures to help coal miners have actually hurt the oil and gas industry. Um, or in the area of trade, measures to help protect the steel and aluminum industry industries have led to tariffs that have increased costs for those metals, and that in turn hurts a lot of downstream manufacturers, including auto companies. So um, it's a very complicated situation with these tariffs, but there are a lot of unintended consequences from actions that you would think would uh, directly help workers. Anna, let's talk a little bit about the EPA. When the president was campaigning, he criticized the EPA for being too heavy handed, making it difficult for industry to uh, survive. And now we know that uh, the EPA is, is expected to uh, to sort of jointly propose a new rule to dramatically roll back a lot of these Obama era standards on tailpipe admissions. So that's supposed to be good news for automakers, is it? That's right. So the president has been listening to car companies' criticisms of the Obama administration's tighter emission standards. And so it has a plan to roll back those emission standards with new rules that will be coming out soon here. Um, those new rules would also prevent states from setting higher standards, states like California. The issue with that, though, is that California is expected to launch its own legal battle um, to fight uh, the, these new rules, and that could lead to a very long conflict and a situation essentially in which you have uh, you know, two different markets that auto manufacturers are trying to produce for. And so they, too, have ended up in a situation where the Trump administration is, uh, you know, ostensibly trying to help them, but um, creating a lot of uncertainty, possibly a kind of bifurcated market for them that will be very difficult for them to deal with in the coming years. So then what do automakers want? Do they want these restrictions rolled back or not? Um, well, um, so, I mean, I, for auto workers, there, there is a split in the auto industry between what workers generally want and what the companies generally want. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it comes to trade, um, you know, many auto workers are supporting the idea of tariffs, uh, whereas companies have been... Um, you know, somewhat more opposed to those tariffs because they have multinational supply chains. Um, you know, similarly, they do want, uh, you know, some of these emission standards 
rolled back. However, they don't want this much uncertainty and this unending kind of legal battle rolling out in front of them for many years. Okay, you mentioned the tariffs. Let's talk a little bit about that. In response to U.S. Uh, tariffs, China slapped a 25% tariff on U.S. soybeans last week. How could further retaliation impact America's farmers? Because it looks like, though people don't want to use trade war, it's certainly looking a lot like a trade war. Yeah, so actually the threat of these tariffs has already started to impact American farmers. Uh, soybean farmers have already seen their prices drop um, by around 15% in some cases just because of the threat of those tariffs. And then those tariffs in, on soybeans did go into effect on Friday. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that is going to be a challenge for American farmers. You know, China is a huge buyer of American soybeans, and the country does need to keep buying many American soybeans, um, but it does have some other places it can turn to as well. There's been speculation that Brazil will plant new fields to open up a new source of supply. And many, many farmers I've talked to have said that, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of support for the president in that community, and they've said that they're willing to give him the benefit of the doubt for right now. Um, that they think he is trying to negotiate a better deal. But as these tariffs continue to hurt them, um, I wonder you know, if we'll see their, their faith and their patience uh, in these trade measures continue. You know, the way the president talks about trade, and he talks about these trade deficits, um, he speaks as if America is getting nothing in return, as if someone's sort of dipping into the, our bank account and removing money and not putting anything back. Can you talk a little bit about trade deficits and whether or not they're all bad or all good or if they can be characterized in that way at all? Sure. So the president is very focused on this metric of trade deficits. He describes it as a sort of zero-sum situation in which if the United States has a trade deficit with a country, it's losing. I mean, another way to describe the trade deficit is that the U.S is buying something from other countries and the trade deficit is just the way of paying for it. I mean, if you go to the store, you're expected to give them some money for the goods that you're getting. So, you know, while uh, the United States does have a trade deficit, it's also getting all of these goods uh, in return. And there is a lot of um, disagreement, you know, between economists in general and the president on the importance of this metric. Um, there are some economists who think that the trade deficit is negative, a negative factor for American manufacturing and American employment. However, there are a lot of other reasons for it. It's really tied to savings rates in the United States. It's tied to the dollar's position as an international reserve currency. And a lot of economists are skeptical that tweaking the terms of trade like the president wants to will actually result in a reduction in the trade deficit. Yeah, it certainly sells well, but it's not an indication of the entire picture. Anna Swanson, thank you so much. Thank you.